Hi, this is Russell with DieselGiant.com and another diagnostic short. Hey guys, it's Russell with DieselGiant.com and I wanted to do a quick tips video. Um, there are a lot of things that people that have been in the automotive industry take for granted, including myself, about how to do things. And everything that we know we learned, either from reading, watching, or somebody else teaching us. So I know that I've seen people do this wrong a lot, so that's why I wanted to do a video on it, on how to load a grease gun. Now, the most common the most common size for grease gun in the cartridges that you see here, you can get these in any automotive store. Um, here's one for Mobile One. Here's a uh, used one of these. Uh, this is my favorite grease, is the Conklin Rhino grease. But you're going to have a 14 ounce cartridge. Okay, this is the most common. They make them larger, they make them smaller, they have some where you can use bulk, but I'm going to be talking about this. Alright, so on a tube of grease, you're going to see a little pull tab area, like on a uh, can of soda, and then you're going to have a cap that will remove and you have your grease. Now, the reason that I'm doing this video is because I've done this wrong before. So, here is your standard grease gun. Now this one happens to be what's called a pistol type. Some of them may have a long lever. We call those lever types. Some of these are air operated. Some of them are manual. But for the ones that operate off the 14 ounce grease cartridges, we are going to show you how to do that. Now, some of the grease guns, the bottom will come off. It will unscrew and the top, okay? <clears throat> So what we're going to do is, I'm going to unscrew the body from, this is called the head, alright, or the trigger assembly, and there's a small port in there, and inside here is a plunger that we can pull back like this, and there's a tab right here, which is how we release it. Now that plunger inside the grease gun is what forces against the grease in here to allow it to uh, be dispensed when you pull the trigger. So the way that you load this is you pull this all the way back so the plunger's in the bottom. Now this is where people will make a mistake. If you have a grease gun where this part unscrews, you don't want to get this backwards, all right? It even says on here, this end and gun first, okay? What you want is that you want the top, I'm calling this the top, okay? You want this here. See how this fits? It'll go right down and it'll it'll rest on the, uh, the lip right there. Now, this is what you don't want to do. You do not want to pull this and let this handle go or you will have 14 ounces of grease either in your face, on your clothes, or whatever. So, we've got to open this obviously, so we'll pop this top, okay? And the grease is in there just like that. We want to take the top assembly Screw this back on, okay, just like that. Notice this is still in the um, ready position, and then all you do is you, on this one, you just pull it and let the spring go. Now what's going to happen is that it's putting this tube of grease under pressure, and then we want to work the air out, so I'm just going to squeeze the uh, trigger right here. And you're going to see grease dispense. 
Okay, it's just that easy. Now, the other tip that I would give you is there are a lot of greases that will separate. I keep my grease gun in a um, one of these Rubbermaid storage containers. It sits in here with it, the accessories. It has that, and it's got another extension with it. Because this is the only grease I've ever found that won't wash out of bearings and it will not separate in here. Depending on where you store your grease and the temperature it's stored on, um, even this stuff will it will separate in the gun. So what you'll do is you'll pick the gun up to use it, and out of the very back, the um, different weights of grease will basically liquefy themselves and run all over. That's why I've got this paper towel in here. So um, basically, I just put this like this. And it fits in here absolutely perfect. And it's got a top that goes on it. Now you can keep this in your shop, in your garage, but if it gets hot, like it does here, uh, I prefer to keep this inside where it's um, climate controlled. It doesn't really get over a 72 and that grease will stay in there until you use it up. So guys, I hope this quick tip was helpful. And if you have any questions, want me to do any other type of tool reviews, I've got some, uh, some good videos coming up. One of them is going to be opening this oil filter out of the jet. I'm going to do a tool review on an item that I think should be in everybody's toolbox. So I will see you guys in the next video.